So I'm getting ready to film. I'm looking in the mirror, I'm making sure my makeup's okay, I'm putting on my lipstick. And then I go to look a little closer and I see a red mark right in here. So I'm like, ah, oh, shit, I've got a zit. Who the hell gets a zit right there? I don't think I've ever gotten a zit in my entire life right there, even during puberty, which was not very kind to me in the skin department. But I'm looking closer, I'm like, is it a rash? What the hell's going on? And I look even closer, and it's lipstick. I got lipstick right there. Not here, not here, not any place that would be kind of understandable to get lipstick, but right there. Hey guys, this is Desiree, and welcome to Unbound Book Reviews, and today I'm going to be reviewing from Lukov with Love by Mariana Zapata. By the way guys, I do have to apologize for the quality of my audio in the last videos that I've uploaded. For some reason, my mic decided not to work even though I checked it, and then I looked at the end of filming and I realized that I'd accidentally muted it when I was moving uh, the microphone to get a better placement for it. But I'm looking at it right now and everything seems like it's fucking peachy, so hopefully the audio for this video will be much, much better. So from Lukov with Love was the Pick What I Read Next winner for the month of April. The last Mariana Zapata book that I read was The Wall of Winnipeg and Me. That was way back in December. And even though I'd read it right at the end of the year, it still managed to become one of my top favorites of that year. It made the third place, I believe. So I was all for it. I loved that entire fucking book. It was really long and it was very, very much a slow burn, but I'm all about slow burns. They are some of my ultimate favorite uh, tropes in novels. I just love that tension that gets built up. I love the anticipation of waiting for the characters to finally realize that they love each other, finally get together. I love that anticipation which is probably one of the reasons why I'm okay with cliffhangers I just I really I'm kind of a glutton for punishment in that way I really enjoy the the waiting I really enjoy the anticipation of it so ever since I read the wall of Winnipeg and me I've really been wanting to get into more Mariana Zapata books I have had dear Aaron on my TBR list since the beginning of the year that is something that I do need to get to I've also seen a lot of your comments about culty that's one that is also on my TBR list. But from Lukov with Love was chosen by you guys for me to read, so that's the one I have read first out of all of those other ones. Now, Mariana Zapata is known as the queen of slow burns. I'm guessing that every single one of her romances are slow burn type tropes, which is okie dokie fine with me. Again, I love me some slow burns. Now, that being said, I had some issues with this one. I didn't hate it. It was like a three star for me, but there was something about it for me personally that just didn't quite fit. I'm not entirely sure what this was. This was about a girl named Jasmine Santos. I think her name is pronounced Jasmine. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's how it's pronounced. I have horrible pronunciation skills when it comes to names. I don't mean any offense. I'm just I'm trauma best. But this is about a figure skater named Jasmine Santos, and she is pissed. And I do mean pissed because she seems to be at the end of her figure skating career and she's not really getting anywhere. She's not really getting any awards. She's just not getting any notability for what she's doing. All of the notability and all of the recognition is going for this guy named Ivan Lukov, who is just the golden boy of the figure skating world. Now, in the first couple of chapters, A, the writing seemed very different from what it had been in the Wall of Win Winnipeg and me. There was the fluidity in the writing to Wall of Winnipeg, but with this one, there was something that seemed very choppy in the writing. I'm not entirely sure what it was, but it just seemed kind of stilted. And I, it didn't flow as well as I thought it was going to. I can get past, you know, writing that I'm not really crazy about if the story itself is really, really good. Now, from the get-go, I wasn't terribly a big fan of Jasmine. She kind of pissed me off a little bit. She was kind of petulant and whiny and just why is this other guy getting all this recognition? And why am why is it never happening to me? And I can understand when you've worked your whole life for something that it never seems to be enough, but she was just really pissy and again quite petulant. To me it was the way, you know, a teenage girl or a teenager of any gender would react of why this, why that, why me, why me. That's how it kind of started. But again, I wanted to push through because I figured, all right, her character development is going to take her to a new place. Sometimes we don't always like the characters in the beginning, but we see the growth throughout the entire story. She's actually pretty well known to not work well with other people, but she ends up working with Ivan Lukov, 
the golden boy himself. And it starts off as this sort of um, enemies to lovers sort of a thing. They really clash, they really butt heads with each other. Now this was the stage where I was like, all right, here's where the story begins. Let's get this train to move and I'm ready and I'm on board. But the book, I hate to say this and I never thought I was ever going to say it, but it was too slow. And it wasn't slow in the great way that The Wall of Winnipeg and Me was, where you really got to feel the build-up, and you really got to see each brick being layered on top of their foundation, which was shaky enough to begin with. And in a good way, I mean, they had a lot to build off of. And Mariana Zapata did such a beautiful job of gradually getting to that romance, but there was something kind of stilted about how they ended up becoming together. And this book goes months and months. I think it actually spans over a year or so, maybe a little bit less of time before they actually get together. But the thing is, it just didn't feel natural to me. The problem I think I had was that I didn't really get to feel the tension between um, Ivan and Jasmine until very far in the story. I want to say well past 50% for damn sure. Well past 50% where there really isn't even a foundation being made towards their romantic relationship together. They, they become friends. They start off as enemies. They're clashing. They're cussing at each other. They're cussing each other out. It's great. I really, really loved that initial dialogue. And then they become friends. But I got stuck on the friendship aspect of Ivan and Jasmine because I didn't feel the tension. I didn't feel the buildup between Ivan and Jasmine towards a romantic, you know, direction. Now, as far as the character development goes, I actually really love the development in Jasmine because, again, in the beginning, I actually didn't like her. Again, she came off very petulant and very whiny. I didn't think I was going to like her. And I actually ended up really enjoying her character throughout the entire book. I thought the character development was really, really well done. The dialogue was decent. I thought the banter was really great between Ivan and Jasmine. I really loved how they just had this push and pull effect with one another. However, the writing, again, not only did it feel a little bit stilted, but it felt a little lengthy. This was a long book. I, I don't know exactly how long it was, but it's a very long book. I don't think it needed to be that long. I think it could have been shortened a lot. I felt like a lot of situations were just drawn out for the sake of being drawn out. I started to space out a couple of times during the book because there are certain points where they just go on and on and on about a certain emotion or whatever and it's just very, very detailed but too much. It's a little too in your face. However, banter. On point, love the dialogue between um, Ivan and Jasmine. Character development, also on point. Loved that. That's why this book does get three to three and a half stars, I would say. I would push it to three and a half. Because it's not that I didn't like the book. I liked the characters and I liked the banter that they had. But romantically, between Ivan and Jasmine, something just didn't click for me. And you go a long time without anything happening between these two characters. And that I'm fine with, but there was no build up, I felt. They just became friends. And that was fine. I, I started to enjoy the idea of them remaining friends rather than becoming romantic with one another because we spend such a long time with them as friends. And then way, way, way later in the book does something actually happen. And for me, and I know I'm not the only one because I actually read a couple of other reviews after reading the book to make sure that it wasn't just me who was feeling this, but apparently a lot of other people have as well. There was something very awkward when they did finally get together. It was also anticlimactic. I was expecting something really, really big. I was expecting this oh, moment, you know, when they finally get together and it's just a relief for the reader. And with slow burns, when two characters finally get together, you want your fucking head to explode. You want it to blow your mind. And for me, it was a little cringy. I'm not gonna lie. It was a little cringy. I went into it. I went into this book, especially the romance between Ivan and Jasmine, because the last book in my head was Wall of Winnipeg and Me, and the chemistry between the two main characters was so fucking amazing. I was going into this book expecting a chocolate chip cookie, which is my favorite cookie in the world. I was expecting chocolate chip cookie, delicious, decadent, amazing. And then when I finally bit into the cookie, it was like, 
oatmeal raisin. You know, you'll still eat it, and it's decent because it's a cookie. But it's not as good as a chocolate chip cookie. Does that make any sense? I hope it does, because I didn't dislike the book. I just had some issues with it, mainly with the buildup between these two characters. I didn't even feel like it was there too much. I felt like they went from enemies, and then they were just friends. And then when they finally got together, it was just kind of strange. It's like getting into a relationship with your best friend. It doesn't always work. Sometimes it's more awkward than anything and you're just better off as friends. That's how I felt with Ivan and Jasmine. There was something off about their chemistry together. I personally just didn't feel it. However, I loved the character development and I loved the banter between the two. I thought she did a really, really good job. And with that being said, I really hope you guys don't hate me. Um, I'm actually really surprised um, that I felt this way about the book because I thought it was going to blow my mind, just like Wall of Winnipeg and me, but I'm not going to sit up here and go, yay, I loved it, it was amazing, if I really didn't. Um, you guys wanted me to read this, and I promised you guys my honest opinion on it, and this is my honest opinion. I thought it was decent, three, three and a half stars, good, but nowhere near the amazing, awesome bombshell that was the wall of wood and pig in me. All right, guys, so that is it for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe and hit the notification bell down in the right-hand corner. I am never gonna get that right. <laughs> Coordination is not my friend. Hit the notification bell so that you will be alerted when new videos from me are uploaded. And thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys later. Bye.